That's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the Baofeng UV17R, and we're going to get to it right after this. Okay, the items you get in the box, you get the charger with the adapter. I think what these companies are doing is they're going to make one charger and then a bunch of little adapters to fit each different radio. You get your Tactical TED headset, the radio, antenna, 1800 milliamp hour battery, owner's manual, belt clip, and wrist strap. The owner's manual is actually written quite well. Had no real issues with it. It gives you all the usual stuff that any Baofeng radio is going to do. You start with table of contents, you get some getting started, some safety stuff, maintenance, main features. Then you go right into your how-tos, like charging the battery. Then you go into the installation of accessories. They give a good description of the radio, showing all its sides and what each button or knob does. And then they give you a nice icon key for the screen. Then they show you how to do the most common things, like adjusting the volume channel switching on the VFO, going from band A to band B, talk about your Vox, they give you some information on DTMF, then they give you a key for the menu items and a troubleshooting guide, and at the end they give you the tech specs for the radio, and here they show the power again, 5 watts on high, 2 watts on low, and we will test that out, but again, all in all, it's a good manual. Easy to understand. Okay, let's take a quick tour around this radio. On the left side, you can see you have a little button here that shows a flashlight on it. You have the PTT and this bottom button. Now on the flashlight, the flashing light's not in the usual spot. It's actually on the bottom. One press turns it off, or correction on. Another press, you get the flash. Press it again to turn it off. Press and hold for the alarm. And then on the bottom, that'll give you the FM commercial radio. Not getting anything right now. Press it again to turn it off. Press and hold, opens the monitor. On the top of the radio, you have obviously your antenna. You have the transmit receive icon the power and volume knob. And it looks like they've got this little compass thing here. Maybe they're thinking of using GPS in there or this is a case from a radio that has GPS. On the right side, pull the flap open. This is where you can hook up programming cables and microphones. On the front, you have your screen. This button gets you into the menu, and then you use the one on the other side to get you out of the menu. You also use this button for going back and forth from band A to band B. And then your up and down arrows, and then your typical nine key with some shortcuts in it. And the battery on this, you have to screw it in to secure it, and the belt clip attaches to the battery. At the time of filming this video, these radios are going for $24.99. However, here on the Baofeng website, if you order a two-piece one, you get about a buck and a half savings on each radio. And on the six-piece, you get about $4.99 savings per radio. It's showing that the power plug is only a 110 plug for US. They give you some optional bundling items. Now, saying the transmit, it goes from 144 to 148 megahertz and 420 to 450 megahertz. Receive 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 519.995 megahertz. It does have NOAA and commercial FM reception. It talks about the wide and narrow bands. The usual 104 DCS and the 50 CTCSS codes. 
This shows a couple of the features. And they have the new style charger, as I mentioned earlier, where you basically just replace these inserts. I guess they're just going to make one style of charger in a cost-saving venture. Now this radio has this wireless frequency copy that we saw in another radio, which I will link in the top right corner of your screen. This radio says it will do 5 watts on high, 2 watts on low. We will test that out. And again, it shows you everything you get in the box. You can find them on Amazon. They're a little more expensive though. But if you have Prime, you'll probably get it quicker. The menu of this radio is pretty much like any other Baofeng, especially these new ones. Go ahead and enter the menu. And on these menus now, you can set them up to kick you out of the menu after a certain amount of time. I have this one set for 60 seconds. You start off with your squelch, step, and you have power, save, and you go into your Vox, wide and narrow. This is for how long you want the backlight on, if you want to listen to the beeps or not. This is a timeout timer. I have it set to 120 seconds. This is for your receive CTCSS, as well as receive DCS. And then you have the same for transmit CTCSS and DCS. You can scan for CTCSS and DCS. This is the save mode for your DCS. If you want the voice prompt on or off, and you can choose your language, either Chinese or English. You have the DTMF, push to talk ID. Right here for band A, you can choose if you want the name tag that you've selected or just the frequency to show. And the same with band B. You can do auto lock. This is the repeater shift. And your frequency for the repeater, either 0.6 or 5.0. Your memory channel and deleting the memory channels. If you want to use a Roger beep or not. And right here is the menu exit time. Fox delay. Your power on message. If you want to reset the VFO or the whole radio. Power on password. Now this is stopwatch. To use the stopwatch... You go ahead and select it, it'll flash, and it'll take you right into it. To start it, press the green button. And to stop it, you press the green button again. Now this does not have a lap timer like most standard stopwatches do, so when you go to start it again, it starts over. To exit the stopwatch, just push the blue button on the right, and it'll take you back out. Go back into the menu. And this shows you the versions for your firmware and hardware. In total, you have 46 menu items. I'm going to show you how to input a repeater into this radio. It's actually a pretty simple process. Now to go back and forth between VFO and memory, you're going to press and hold the green button. There you're in memory. Press and hold again, and you're back to VFO. Now go ahead and input the frequency you want, which is 145220. Then go into the menu. Go to menu item number 12. I'm going to set the CTCSS, which is 103.5. And you can press and hold the button to go through it quicker. Lock it in. Then we're going to menu number out of 28. We're going to set the direction. We want negative. Then we're going to go to menu item number 29. And we want 0.6. And then we're going to pick the memory channel on menu item 30. And we want number 15 for that. And again, you can hold the button to go through it quicker. Now you can't put in a name tag or anything like that. You'll need a computer software for that, something like Chirp or whatever the offerings are from Baofeng. Then exit out of the menu. 
switch back over to memory and you can see on the number 15 down here that we've saved it. Let's give this a whirl and see if it works. WJ6F testing. Now we heard the repeater come back, so we know it's working. Okay, Baofeng has a new feature for this radio. It's called a wireless frequency copy. What that allows you to do is if somebody's transmitting, you can capture some of the frequency and CTCSS code or DCS code that they're using. So we're gonna be trying 145220, which is the local repeater for here. To get into the wireless copy, press and hold the blue button and see how it says search UHF. What you do is you press the pound key and that switches to VHF. Now we're gonna press and hold transmit on this other Baofeng and you'll see it appear on the other one. Now for some reason, this did not come out right. It should say 144.620, but the CTCSS is correct. Let's try it again and see what we get. We'll get clear out. Switch back to VHF. And again, it didn't work. This may be something that can be fixed with a firmware update. Let's try a simplex right quick and see how well that works. Clear out. Switch to band B. We use 146520, national call. And there, that one worked. I'm gonna try the repeater again, just in case I didn't hold the transmit button long enough. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how long I hold that for. Okay, this radio says that on low power, it should be two watts, and on high power, it should be five watts. We're gonna start with the national calling, 146.520 on low power, and see how this uh, measures up. Okay, we're a little over two watts, that's good. Switch this up to high. Let's give this a try again. Now we're not quite at five, but 4.3 to five watts is not really gonna make a big difference. Now let's try 440. And on low power. Oh, we're only at 0.42, not even a half a watt. Let's try high power real quick. And we're only at two and a half watts. Half of where we should be on high power. Okay, I've got the radio set up to test the harmonics on this. We're currently at 146.520, set to low power. Now I'm gonna give this a minute to sort itself out. All right, and you can see the fundamental is at 34.4 dB, which is good. Then the second harmonic, that one's only negative 12.2 dB, and it's supposed to be negative 40 dB. Three is 43, so it's okay there. And four is only negative 34. However, where three fails is because it's not below, not below the blue line of 25 microwatts. In fact, none of them are. So what does that mean? That means this radio is not up to the FCC requirement, which means it is not legal to transmit on the ham bands. One of the things I really like about this radio is I like 
its design. I like the fact that the flashlight is on the bottom and it has two bulbs instead of just the one weak bulb on top. I also like the price point. It's kind of hard to beat a radio that goes between 25 and 28 bucks, depending on if you buy it from the Baofeng store or Amazon. The problems begin when you look at the harmonics. As we saw, this radio is not legal for use in the US on the ham bands. Also, the power on 440 didn't match up. On two meters on high power, it wasn't exactly perfect, but close enough for government work. If they fix a couple of those things, I think this radio would definitely be a great radio for people, especially as a beginner radio or one to just throw in your car. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos? And again, thanks for watching.